Years ago, I had the fresh idea to do the usual solo run format, but I wanted to use a Pokemon from another generation. My original Garchomp video, it was a proof of concept all the way back in 2021, using someone else's tools while I learned to code the ROMs myself. And today, it all comes full circle with a redo of that Garchomp run. So grab yourself a Sodi Pop and let's see how it goes. I'm not gonna begin this video gushing about Garchomp's design, and I don't need to tell you guys how popular of a Pokemon Garchomp is, but it is cool. Let's just leave it at that and dive a little bit deeper. Now, as a pseudo-legendary, it has great stats to no one's surprise, but for the most part, when you look at a solo run Pokemon, you want a good attacking stat, you want a good speed stat. Garchomp has it, 130 base attack, 102 base speed. Everything looks pretty set in terms of that. Now the choice of moves for today was a little bit more complex. Now at the end of the day I went with Generation 7 and there are notable moves like Fire Fang and Crunch but those are special moves. We're using a physical Pokemon so they're not really going to get much use. The same also goes for Dual Chop which is a double kick clone but this at least gets stabbed, hits twice, it's pretty good, we'll use it a lot. I'll talk about Sand Tomb later, it's very pivotal for the run but for me the make or break decision for the learn set it came down to one thing. I wanted a generation that learned sand attack decently early and I wanted to start off with dragon rage and gen 7 was the perfect fit for that. So for the first time I can remember, I'm not going to break down the Brock split. I haven't really talked about Dragon Rage in a while, but if you didn't know, let's go over it together. It does a flat 40 points of damage and having it at the start of the game is pretty much a cheat code. You have to go all the way to the very end of Mount Moon to see a single Pokemon that has over 40 HP in the game. And even then, you can still find a lot of one shot uses, even on Nugget Bridge. So what this means is I go pretty much as fast as I possibly can towards Brock. I'm going to easily one shot his Pokemon and we're going to get a pretty crazy sub six minute Brock split, which is exactly how you want to start the run. In Mount Moon, I want to set up the overarching problem that this run has. And if you want to pause the video, comment down below what you actually think it's going to be for Garchomp. Do it now because it's always pretty interesting to see how you guys think. So I'm going to be getting the rare candy here. And you might have noticed on like the really, really good like top three videos for these kind of cross-gen runs. I've been skipping this candy. It's something you can just cut out. But for Garchomp specifically, from the time that you boot up the game, when you have that slow leveling group combined with the dragon and ground topping being double weak to ice, it presents a looming and foreboding problem coming up in the future. And you already know, it's Lorelei. And if I pick up any candies, or do any extra battles, or make any other decisions that maybe a top three run would skip, or if I maybe do things in a weird order, it's all because I am trying to get the most out of this Pokemon. I'm not, I don't want to go into Lorelei just praying that things work out. So that fight, we got consistent. We, we're doing what we have to do for Lorelei. But let's not dwell too hard on that right now. I want you guys to know about it, but take that thought, tuck it away. We'll come back to it later. We got a lot of run left to do. In Cerulean, I'm immediately going to head to Misty. Now, we are neutral to water moves, so that means Misty will use them. And even though a lot of Pokemon from this point on are going to have over 40 HP and Dragon Rage isn't going to one-shot, it's pretty much starting to fall off pretty hard already. Being able to two-shot things still isn't bad. It's still pretty good. We are going to take a pretty decent chunk of damage, go all the way down to the red health by the end of it. But I feel like I say this a lot, but when you're in the slow leveling group and you're trying to cut out battles, being able to do Misty first and get that experience it helps out so much but that is the second badge down Popping straight into rival number two, and there's kind of like a problem that we'll see with Garchomp. Now, Dragon Rage has already started to fall off. We have the Sand Attacking Bird up first, and this is something I'll, I'll talk about now. I'm not going to show a lot of footage later, but Dual Chop for a little bit is our best move. You can see on the side, 40 base power, double kick clone. It doesn't have 100% accuracy, but 60 effective power hitting twice. It's okay. Garchomp doesn't have bad special, but for the longest time here, it's going to be our only way to really deal with flying. Liars. So you pretty much just hope you don't get sand attacked here. The rest of the battle's not too bad. You even have a spot or two where you can just use Dragon Rage. Like I said earlier, I was a little bit hyperbolic and I said, hey, it falls off. But being able to two-shot things is still pretty decent. 
but that will lead us to something very near and dear to my heart and that's talk, let's talk about clusters guys and i gotta admit for a really strong cross-gen pokemon garchomp doesn't have the best nugget bridge split there are a few spots here and there where there are some pokemon that have less than 40 hp and you can just take them out in one hit guaranteed with dragon rage i think maybe there's five or so spots for that but for the most part everything's gonna be a two shot and i feel like you run into this problem so very often especially when i'm putting these future pokemon back you'll see it so many times where you have a really strong physical 130 plus base attack pokemon that just has these really good special moves but it just can't take full advantage and that's exactly what's on display for garchomp and that's exactly what's going to slow it down but it does all right don't get me wrong it's not mega mewtwo why but what is but the important part for emphasis is that garchomp is not a one-shot specialist as of yet but what is important is sand tomb we're gonna learn that at level 19 now this is for all intents and purposes this is a clamp clone clamp is the signature move of cloister it is a 35 base power water signature move it's a trapping move more importantly and if you didn't know if you outspeed your opponents they just do not get to play the game because you will just trap them forever and that is what sand tomb is i think sand tomb is i don't have numbers pulled up right now i feel like unprofessional for doing this but pretty sure that clamp is 75 percent accuracy while sand tomb is 85 percent accuracy so that's very welcome we're gonna get a lot of mileage out of it and it doesn't really look that strong on paper i know trapping moves are strong but generally the trade-off is that they're weak but this trapping move actually hits pretty hard now i've been on record clamp is so underratedly strong is underratedly even a word it is now add it to the dictionary like if you add up the five like if you hit a five turn clamp with cloister with stab it's 52 effective power per hit per trap it has the potential to do like 260 effective power and it's just it, it can be really strong at worst it always hits twice you get a, a 104 effective power move which is still really good and there's something else i want to touch on and just get ahead of the curve real quick and talk about something else I am not going to be picking up Dig for this run. Now, Dig is incredibly strong. We get Stab, and you might be looking at it and saying, hey, this is a must-use move, but it's really not. The long and the short of it for this is that it doesn't really help me reach any ranges that Sand Tomb can't already do, even just on a two-turn. Now, keep in mind that Sand Tomb is stronger than Dig on a three-turn hit, and that's what it boils down to. And you'll see decisions like this, and sometimes... I'll get comments and this is nothing negative I'm not trying to be negative about anything they'll ask hey why didn't you do this or maybe I watched another video and they did this why didn't you do it and the long and the short of it is I only do three runs and I'm man enough to admit that sometimes I do miss things sometimes my runs aren't perfect now if you go back and you look at things like the Parasect race or the Smeagol race you know you look at those and you say hey you did really well with those runs why isn't every single run that you do like that and just on my day to day or I guess bi-weekly by bi-weekly video I I just don't really have a whole ton of time to do stuff. Definitely don't have a lot of time to sit down and do, you know, 20 runs like I did with Smeargle or 100 runs like with Parasect. And that's just kind of like the concessions. You know, like in a perfect utopian world, I would have time to sit down and do dozens of runs and just have everything be perfect. But for me, it's just important that I keep every run to the same standard, which is the general format that I do. Blind run, refine it, then do a third run, and I just keep that run unless I make up any big mistakes. And I just wanted to touch on that because it's something that I think about like I said nothing negative and for comments like that a lot of times they are right like hey why didn't you do this like hey that probably would have been better and I very well might have came to that conclusion if I did another five runs or so but I just simply don't do that and when we go down to the SSN I'm also not going to pick up body slam for the same reason body slam's really good but in the short term I can't one shot the Pidgeotto on rival threes team and the wrapping last which we'll talk about very soon uh, I can't get one shot ranges with that either so the alternative, like maybe you pick up Body Slam, maybe you go crazy and pop an early candy or pick up a few extra battles and you can maybe get those one shot ranges. But, you know, we're going for the fastest time and it's oftentimes just faster just to scoot by these battles, even if it takes a few extra turns, because you will make up the dividends later by skipping over these moves. And hopefully all that made a little bit of sense to you. 
And you can kind of see some of that stuff on display here with rival number three. Remember, Body Slam would not be a one shot on the Pidgeotto anyway. So you pretty much still got to hope for no sand attack no matter what. I just go dual chop. It's going to be our answer for Flyers for a little bit longer at least. And there's not really much to say about this battle. When you can use Sand Tomb, Sand Tomb's just an absurdly strong move. Like there's a lot of reasons that I'm using it. Lorelai pretty much being the main reason, but it's just really strong whenever you see it. I, it, I think it's better than Dig. And if you're a member or a Patreon, you can play the patch file and kind of try it out for yourself if you really want to. But if not, I guess you just gotta trust me. Lieutenant Surge is next, and as a ground type that is immune to electric attacks, I think you already know how this one goes. Uh, for the first two Pokemon, you don't even need two turns of sand attack, just the singular turn can take them out, and then we easily take out the Raichu. Not really much to say here, this is kind of like one of those duh moments, you know a ground type's gonna completely demolish Surge anyway. But that does lead us into some split data. So the things to look at here, we always go against Mewtwo's time. If you didn't know, that's the whole point of these cross-gen runs. Can they beat Mewtwo in his most broken form? And as of now, Garchomp is hanging on with a two second lead. So for all intents and purposes, they're pretty much tied. And this will be the last time we look at split data for a while, probably until after Giovanni, because Garchomp honestly has a kind of a weird route. We'll We'll, we'll talk you through it. But for now, first three gems of the game, we are at least on pace with Mewtwo. Let's see if that's going to hold up as the run continues. And now I would like to talk about one of my favorite trainers, the Rapping Junior Trainer. So let's go over the premise of this fight. We all know it too well. Oddish will usually paralyze you and Bellsprout will wrap you. And if she doesn't get it on the first go around, there's another round of Oddish and Bellsprout to do the same thing. I'm going to be transparent here with you guys. I reset the entire run four times here because I got bad luck. Now, you don't always lose this fight. Sometimes you'll still make it through. A lot of times you'll just make it through, but what ends up happening is you'll be paralyzed, you'll get wrapped, and it ends up taking two, three, four minutes of in-game time, and that's just not acceptable in terms of a speed run when you're trying to get the fastest time. So this fight was pretty bad, and the only solution that I could see, and you gotta know that Body Slam does not one-shot at level 23. That's one of the big reasons we didn't get it. It doesn't one-shot these or Pidgeotto. That's why I left it off the set. And Sand Tomb does fine, but you gotta know, when you have 85% accuracy, the game will screw you over sometimes, and it did a lot. Now here, the worst thing that's gonna happen is I get poisoned. And you know, being poisoned is not great, but at least I keep my stats, and I'm able to get through it. And keep in mind, this is my best attempt at this. I don't know why I was so unlucky on this fight, but after the fight, I have to use the one full restore that I got here because I didn't buy any antidotes early. And it's just kind of frustrating. This fight would just never go my way. And you could, you could say, hey, Dig would be pretty good here. But then it would make my mid-game routing a little bit weird with Earthquake and having to hold off on it. That's a whole other can of worms I don't want to talk about. But I really did want to touch on the Wrapping Junior Trainer because it was kind of an issue. So moving forward in Rock Tunnel, don't really need to take a look at it. I will say that I had to use an early elixir here on Sand Tomb, but there's not really anything bad. It's a little bit slow. Kind of like a lot of the rest of the game, there's a lot of two shots here. It's not really the fastest thing in the world, but not really something we have to look at too closely. Next up is the Rocket Hideout, and I'm not going to pick up any high money items. We are not going to be using vitamins today, and it's pretty straightforward here. Dual Chop or Sand Tomb will just do the work on pretty much anything, and that includes Giovanni, so I'll just show the Kangaskhan here, but another pretty easy section. Now we've kind of warmed up, let's kind of hop into that mid game. That's going to begin with the Celadon buy, and there's pretty much only one thing of note here, and it's Rock Slide. Finally, we have an answer for like Pidgeotto or anything else, and I don't need to tell you guys that the combination of Rock Slide and Earthquake or just a ground move in general, those two just complement each other so well, and this is like our first step towards getting a huge, huge power spike, but we need to make it to Silphco before we can really get this show on the road. Now let's take a look at rival number four, and we can see Rock Slide do its job on Pidgeotto. Not overly impressive because rival number four is generally pretty weak, but there is another problem, and it's a problem that a lot of these runs have, and that's Execute. Don't really have a good way to deal with it. Rock Slide cannot one-shot it right now, and if it really wanted to, it could have put me to sleep here, but thankfully it didn't. But Rock Slide is more importantly, you know, it's our answer to Flyers, but more importantly, the eggs. 
The eggs are always a problem. That gives us a fighting chance and we're about to start building the pieces to take care of it. But the rest of Pokemon Tower, don't really need to take a look at. We got Sandtomb. But what I would like to say before we get off this little section here is Erica. Why don't I take on Erica? And she's pretty scary for Garchomp. We're neutral to grass damage, so Razor Leaf still hurts. And if you get put to sleep, it's kind of like a wrapping junior trainer situation where you can waste a ton of time. I could try my luck and just sand tumor down and hope she doesn't get a turn, but I think there's faster ways to do it and I'm just going to hold off on her for now. And in Sifco, you already know, we got two things on our mind. Number one, go to that 10th floor, get our beloved Earthquake. Now, very important. I do pick up the Carbos here. Uh, I didn't mean to. Complete accident. I didn't need it. Just a little bit of wasted time. But Earthquake, really helpful. And then we're going to go make our way up to the 7th floor and pick up Swords Dance. So you already know, the Premier, if you're a physical attacker, it don't even matter. If you're Weedle and you can learn Earthquake, Rock Slide, Swords Dance, those moves can just carry you. But when you're Garchomp and you have 130, 30 base attack you hit really hard you already know so we set up our learn set and this is actually going to be the final learn set of the game we're going to be rocking that double ground moves today and we'll we'll see why Santum is just so important to the run later but even though we're only level 32 we are set up in our moves we got a lot of attack and let's test it out on rival number five So with all of our shiny new toys, the goal here is to set up once and then go for a sweep. I would like to set up later, but I kind of get flustered here because I get an immediate sand attack and in my head I'm already thinking, oh brother, here we go again. You can see on the overlay we have accuracy, you know, reflected by our stage. So 59% accuracy on rock slide, 66 on even the best of moves. So it doesn't look great. No one likes to take a sand attack. And it got in my head so much that I actually forgot that I wanted to set up a second time just to make sure I could sweep through the execute and the blast toys at the end so I just forget and every once in a while the game will throw you a bone and you'll have one of those battles to where you have a sand attack on you but you just don't miss and to make things even better on execute I don't one shot him so I'm opened up to be put to sleep and just waste a bunch of time and ultimately maybe take a reset here just to save a little bit of time but the rock slide triggers a retroactive super potion and I just make it through and like I said I just, I just don't miss and I guess that's not entirely true I do miss on the Alex exam but in the grand scheme of things only missing a single turn while having a sand attack on you and not executing the original plan that you had you know thought out for yourself and still making it through at a pretty decent time I was pretty happy with it pretty sloppy fight overall but rival number five can make or break runs but we survived that's the important thing So when in Rome, as they say, uh, I'm going to go ahead and take on Sabrina since I'm in the area. And this fight's really not too bad. I outspeed everything but the Alakazam. That's really the only concession you have to make. But if you set up once, you can easily just one-shot everything. And since I'm kind of like in a little lull here in a little weird spot of the run, I can just burn earthquakes and just make it through as fast as possible. And this is funny because this is the first gym that I've done since Lieutenant Surge. I didn't really mean for it to plan out this way, but it just, it is what it is. I just found it kind of interesting and when we look at the split data later I want you to look at the huge time disparity between the surge split and the Sabrina split so let's continue this little gym leader rush we have going on starting with Sabrina now we're into Koga and just like Lieutenant Surge he is weak to ground types I'm already poisoned I'm incredibly low already but all I need to do is get a singular swords dance off now it would suck if maybe he got a smoke screen off on me but he doesn't but that plus two from the swords dance means that I can just one shot everything with earthquake once again, another easy badge, and let's keep it going straight into Erica. Since we held off on this battle, it's going to look easy. Earthquake can one-shot the Victory Bell and the Vile Plume. A couple of Rock Slides can take out Tangela. But it has to be said that the fact that I showed Erica this much respect and held off this long just shows how good of a gym leader she can be if you don't have a great answer for her. So it looks easy, but I just didn't want to do this early because of sleep chances or even just multiple Razor Leafs or something like that. That's gonna take us to a very brisk swim down to Cinnabar, get our toes wet, and before you know it, it's time to ask yourself, is TM28 actually Tombstoner, brother? 
or not. But what I do find interesting is that Garchomp is the original Tombstoner. It's the only Pokemon that ever had that name. Now, never mind that I forgot to actually name Garchomp in this video. Overlooked that. But let's just kind of see how Blaine goes. It's a ground top against the fire tops. I think you know how it's going to go. We got Earthquake. Things go exactly how you would expect. No need to inject any suspense into this one. I think we all know that I get that seventh badge pretty easy. So before we dive in directly to Giovanni, I have to say that I made a pretty big mistake on this final run. Everything else was so perfect that I had to just ride with it, but here's what happened. Way back in Koga's gym, after I fought his second trainer, I was going to level up to 38, and I was supposed to use a ton of rare candies there. I don't know if that was the best call in the world, but it was the plan, and I find it usually it's better to stick to a plan and just be on the same page with everything you have planned out than just try to go off script. It usually doesn't work out well. So since that moment, I didn't use my rare candy, so I've been just trying to find a time where I leveled up directly, just for the best time and it doesn't happen till right here after this little Rhyhorn trainer the first mandatory battle in Giovanni's gym so this is where I'm going to pop every single candy all 10 candies I'm going to get up to level 50 but I got to call myself out a little bit I, I went off script and I kept wondering if I was going to have to scrap this run because I was like when am I going to use my candies I don't know I'm supposed to already use them but this is where I end up using them level 50 and as for Giovanni I think you already know pretty much a formality for that eighth badge I can go earthquake on everything I could even go earthquake at the end or maybe I could set up a swords dance but I didn't overcomplicate it. At the very end, I did switch to Sand Tomb for the very simple fact that if I got a four turn Sand Tomb, it was a guaranteed one shot on Rhydon. Even the three shots a little bit stronger than Earthquake. So I guess that might be interesting to maybe one person out of the thousands that watch this, but eighth badge down. Let's not waste any time. We can go straight into rival number six. Honestly, really not much to talk about in this one. I do set up to plus two, but thankfully Sand Attack is no longer an option for the Pidgeot. And that really gives me the ranges. I guess the only thing I can talk about here is my mistakes, where I accidentally go for a Rock Slide on the Rhyhorn. Kind of waste the turn, but overall, I think it's you know pretty impressive that a single setup can just one-shot the entire team. I think that's pretty cool, but it's a pretty easy battle. Now let's talk about some more important things. Let's get back to that split data. So like I said earlier, the splits are going to look a little bit funky. You can see from Lieutenant Surge to Sabrina, there's a whopping 44 minute time difference. And that's just because I really needed to do everything else that I could do in order to get to Earthquake and Swords Dance as fast as I could. And things went pretty well. Now you're going to see that the splits are going to turn to red starting with Koga. Now none of these sync up because Garchomp honestly did a version of a route I don't think I've ever seen before, like the, the order of the gyms. But the important number to look at is when you get to the Giovanni split I'm three minutes behind Garchomp does make up a little bit of time but I'm two and a half minutes behind Mewtwo going into the Elite Four which I guess it's not impossible for Garchomp to pass that Mewtwo bar but it does have its work cut out for it especially when you consider that Lorelai's coming up first for double weak to ice I think you probably already know the strategy but without further ado I think there's no point in holding off there are no changes I don't pick up anything in Victory Road, so I guess we can just jump straight in. So when it comes to Dugong, you have one option, you have to tank a move, and you're going to see that it's going to do an absolute boatload of damage, it doesn't feel great, but I need to set up once. The big lose condition here is that you get crit and you just get one shot, nothing you can really do about it, Lorelai loves to crit. The second thing that's pretty bad is if you get an attack drop from the Aurora Beam, it doesn't happen here, and from this point you would think it's smooth sailing, but that's not really the case. Now we've had issues, or at least I did play in this run, with sub 100% accurate moves, we have two of them on our set now and it would be a shame if one of them missed and when the cloister comes in we go for sand tomb because we have to trap it and that's the first thing i want to freeze frame it here because i miss and that's not really good and something i haven't really touched on in the video is how garchomp feels a lot inconsistent even going back to like dual chop it has 90 percent accuracy rock slide 90 percent sand tomb 85 percent having to use those moves for like a large bulk of the game it leads to a lot of inconsistency and like i said on the wrapping last i had to restart the whole run several times and this was a pretty good run all things considered and in this pivotal moment this is when the game decides hey you're gonna miss and that means that the run's over because we're gonna get hit with an ice move but not so fast my friends the AI in gen 1 does
does see water on equal footing with this top combination here. So that means that we get bailed out. It's going to use Clamp. Now Clamp's a strong move. It's just as strong as Sand Tomb. But we are boosted with their Swords Dance. We got a little batch boost on our special. And even though we're already low from that Dugong, we can tank it. And that means I get a second chance. And you're going to see Sand Tomb just trap this Cloister, take it out, and now we're moving on. And we might be at just 18 HP, but we're pretty fine going forward. I can't one-shot the slow bro, but it's not really a threat anyway. And basically, as long as I hit my moves, I'll be fine here. The only part remaining in the battle that I'm really worried about was Lapras, because I have to go for a Sand Tomb Trap once again. But just like with Cloister, I get a three turn, and you can see just how strong a three turn Sand Tomb really is. I don't even have to go through the whole, like if you look at the Dratini video with Rap, I don't even have to go through that. One little round of Sand Tomb just takes it out, and that's the hardest challenge left in the game. Let's just sit back and just relax a little bit and just quickly go over the next few battles now. As for Bruno, Hacker Anthony, whatever you want to call him, very simple. I set up one Swords Dance, go for an Earthquake Sweep. Not really much more to say about it than that. Agatha is also pretty simple, but she kind of has like a pick your poison moment. Now you can just use Earthquake and one shot everything that's weak to it and you outspeed it so there's no issues there, but you can't one shot the Gullbat. So what you can do is maybe if you want to risk it, you could set up one Swords Dance on the first Gengar and you're going to risk Hypnosis and you can just one shot the Gullbat or you can just get rid of the Gengar and then you can just go for a two shot on the gold bat like I do here. Now you're going to see I take supersonic and I actually hurt myself. Doesn't really matter in the grand scheme of things, but it wasn't just a simple matter of just holding down the button. When it comes to Lance, you might be worried about maybe like a Gyarados Hydro Pump and you probably shouldn't be. Now here, we're not even going to get to see it happen, but you just want to set up once. Uh, you're our neutral to water. You had pretty decent special, so Hydro Pump wouldn't do a ton, but just like most of the battles we've already seen in this game, once I get that plus one, I really don't need to do anything else. Else. You could set up one more to maybe try to outspeed the Aerodactyl later, but red version Aerodactyl doesn't really have that threatening of move, so I'm not really too worried about it. And plus two just felt fine to me, so at the end of the day, plus one, use Earthquake where you can, use Rock Slide on the Flyers, pretty straightforward game plan, kind of like the Garchomp game plan. We take it out, and that's going to leave us with one battle remaining. I feel like history repeats itself a lot in these runs, and once again in the champion fight, this is the only time in the game where I need to fully set up, get to plus six attack with three swords dance, and I kind of play it by ear here on the Pidgeot, and what I mean by that is I'll just see what it does. Let's say I use a swords dance and it mirror moves swords dance right back, and then on the next turn it starts to charge up a sky attack. I'll just go ahead and take it out because I don't want to take that damage, but here it just kind of wastes some turns. It does mirror move a couple of times, uses whirlwind just to waste some time, but I'm able to get fully set up here. That's the important thing. I take it out. And from that point, there's really not much to talk about because we have 801 attack. So as you would expect, we just demolish everything one hit. And I will say once again, Executor, that's the only reason that I set up to plus six here. Nothing else could really deal with it. And if you don't have Executor in a one shot range and it gets off a of hypnosis, just like I've mentioned a couple of times in the video already, you have the recipe just to waste minutes of in game time. God forbid the computer keep you asleep for like seven or eight turns. It would be a disaster and completely ruin your time. So if you can, I just, I try to avoid it at all costs. That's the reason for the full setup here. And it's pretty much a formality. We take out Blastoise and that's it. Garchomp has done it. Garchomp finishes the run with a time of 1 hour, 57 minutes, and 53 seconds, and that means that it did not pass the Mewtwo bar, but that's okay. Not every Pokemon can do that. It's a special feat for a reason. Now, what this means, we'll start rolling out this tier list here. You can see the top three. Nothing's really changed there. Uh, it means it'll get a final score of 97.42, and that's, it's good enough. It'll put it into 11th place, surrounded by things like Kyogre and Rayquaza, so pretty good company overall. I think this is actually the only the second gen four Pokemon that we've ever done so that's pretty exciting I do want to kind of run it back with a few of these Pokemon I got some stuff and you know I don't make plans anymore but I think that's a pretty solid ranking and that means that we now have three Pokemon on our third page which is pretty cool but I don't really have much more to say to you guys pretty fun run I always enjoy playing Garchomp a little bit lacking with the start anyway a bunch of special moves on a physical attacker a story as old as time and these pre physical special split games but I had fun and and if you made it this far, you're a real one. I really do appreciate it. Special shout out to my channel members and Patreons. I appreciate the support. And I guess I'll see you on the next one. Bye.